For Bengalis, Sundarbans means beautiful forest. It provides them with the best protection against increasingly violent cyclones, but especially the forest is brimming with game, fish, crustaceans, and wood used for heating and building. The families who live here are entirely dependent on the forest and have always been mindful of the balance between their needs and what the land can offer them. But over the past few years, this balance has been seriously disturbed and the means to remedy it are lacking. Everything lies in the hands of local initiatives. How can humans re-establish the balance of this forest that is looked upon as a protective and nurturing mother by an entire people? The sea level is rising, washing even more salt into the mangrove, and storms are multiplying. On May the 25th, 2009, Cyclone Isla struck the southwestern coast of Bangladesh. The storm destroyed everything in its path. Embankments gave way and water surged over the land. Villages, roads, livestock, rice fields, nothing withstood Isla. Nearly four million people were affected by the disaster. When the winds died down and the water receded, villagers were left to mourn 190 deaths. For a long time, the mangrove forest was Bangladesh's best defense against frequent cyclones. But this time, it wasn't able to halt the disaster. The forest threw in the sponge. Climate change experts estimate that over a billion people will be affected by rising sea levels by the year 2060. Bangladesh is one of the five most vulnerable countries. Asim lives in one of the villages destroyed by the cyclone. He nearly lost his family on that fateful day. A lot of water came rushing into the village. I watched as old people, women, children and pets got swept away. My son was with my wife and she refused to leave his side. I watched them get swept further and further away by the waves. I was really little. My mum and I got swept far away in the flood. I was so scared. The water kept rising. I lost sight of my father. I had no news of them for two days. In 20 years, the Sundarbans have changed so much. Today, it's a sad situation. But disaster is often a catalyst for change. After Isla and the destruction it wreaked, Asim decided to take fate into his own hands. His fate, but also that of the land he so loved. First, he educated himself about the harmful effects of forest exploitation. Then he shared what he learned with his fellow villagers. Next, he came up with an idea that would change everything. Planting an artificial mangrove forest to preserve the original one. And so several times a month, Asim goes from village to village, organizing mangrove planting operations. 
His mission, to reverse the devastating downward spiral poisoning the Sundarbans. You're going to do exactly as I do. First, make a hole. The root is four inches. You have to make a three inch hole, then pack the earth around it. Does everybody understand? Take your time, go very slowly, treat the seedlings like you would your own children. As these trees grow, they'll protect us from flooding. They'll prevent the riverbanks from collapsing. When the trees are big, they'll also protect us from heavy winds. Our villages will be protected. In two years, they'll grow seven meters tall. They'll provide wood for us to burn. They will also give us fruit we can sell. With the money we earn, we'll be able to help poor families in our village and give money to parents so they can send their children to school and marry off their daughters. Ultimately, our goal is to never have to go back to the wild Sundarbans forest so that we don't destroy it. For us, the forest is like our mother, a mother who feeds her children and gives them all her love. In short, the forest allows us to live. That's why we have to do everything we can to preserve the forest and raise the awareness of those who live here.